So good morning, everybody. And uh, today's uh, my topic is um, to say simply it's connect the dots. And this is what the icon I got from uh, one of the websites, where it is very nicely defined, where uh, a precise planning is the most important part in a toric eye implantation, which starts with patient identif identification, and then how we plan the surgery, and what exactly we do when we're implanting toric and post-op assessment. So uh, today's my topic to cover are preoperative planning, appropriate test to choose, and then toric eye wall calculator which is available, and vary on image guided system. So uh, preoperative planning, as already uh, was speaking in the last uh, one or two talks, where we have to choose an ideal candidate who is uh, suitable for a toric eye wall implantation, and we have to do a detailed ocular examination. This is the most important part, because uh, uh, since we are adding to the quality of life, there are many other factors which are actually uh, reducing the quality of life, like maybe ocular surface area or disturbances, or maybe a type of type and grade of cataract which may not be matching for the vision actually what they've already lost, and uh, we have to assess whether the cataract is a real cause for defective vision, and we have to rule out any posterior segment pathologies which may affect the quality of life, which may not be helpful in toricaval implantation. And the most important part in toric eye is to do an accurate biometry. So an accurate biometry, th these two are the important parts, like one is axial length and keratometry. We all know that axial length, even with a millimeter point, one or point five millimeter, there can be a lot of uh, spherical uh, dioptric vari variations, and even keratometry uh, affects the most. So for axial length, we have uh, two types. One is ultrasound biometry and an optical biometry. Ultrasound biometry is routinely used in most of the institutes and most uh, private practices. But what uh, preferred for an eye wall, uh, toric eye wall is optical biometry because it does not have a contact method. So it is more preferable. And uh, more, more than that, it will give both a keratometry reading also, which is, uh, uh, which is combined within the same machine. For the keratometry, this is the most paramount important test, and uh, in keratometry, it will be determined both axis and the power of the eye wall. So as all of us know that cornea and lens corresponds, uh, amounts to the total dioptric power of the eye. Since we are doing a cataract surgery, we are removing the lens. So the only thing which is remaining is the cornea. So this determines what exactly is supposed to be the astigmatic, astigmatism part of the eye. So there are various uh, keratometers which are available, starting from manual, automated to various methods like plasto or slit scan, shame flick, everything is available. Uh, what we have to do is, uh, to have an enhanced accuracy, we need to do a multiple measurements. Not single measure, one, one single measurement is not sufficient. We need to do a multiple measurements. And uh, what ideally uh, uh, been told is, we have to apply two separate devices based on different principles. So if both matches together, then it's an ideal, ideal uh, situation. And a similar steep meridian and two different keratometers are an ideal candidate. And if there is significant variability in both the devices, then we have to evaluate for any other coexisting ocular morbidities. So all the, uh, we have discussed about this posterior corneal astigmatism. As we all know that uh, the cornea has an anterior convex surface and a posterior concave surface. This concave surface acts like a concave lens. And uh, most, of, most of us have an horizontally oval cornea. So it have a 0.5 diopter of against rule astigmatism. What they have observed is it's stable over the time in contrast to anterior corneal uh, curvature, where in younger age it's uh, with the rule and progressively sh it shifts towards the against the rule in older age. So what happens if you don't consider this posterior corneal astigmatism is, so uh, there can be a residual astigmatism which can be added up in case of with the rule astigmatism of 1.3 diopter and about 0.65 diopter in against the rule astigmatism. So this posterior corneal astigmatism has been highlighted as an important part in considering toric eye wall implantation. So uh, when, when we compare various uh, keratometers, uh, the manual, automa manual keratometry and automated keratometry and uh, IOL master's old, older version, they did not show the posterior corneal curvature measurements as Madam told the newer IOL master has that uh, posterior curvature measurements. And the remaining thing like LensStar, OpScan, or Pentacam and Galilee, these consider, consider and they measure the posterior corneal curvature measurements. So these are the ideal uh, instruments when measuring the keratometry. So Hoffman et al. evaluated five different systems for corneal power measurements, including a swep source for near domain OCT, an autokeratometer, a hybrid topographer, a placido topographer, and a shimflock tomographer. What he found was um, a precise results with OCT and hybrid topographer system. So a flock based systems have the disadvantage of high measuring noise. Even though they measure the posterior corneal curvature, they have high measuring noise. So the highest precision what they obtained is uh, combining keratometry with OCT data. So OCT is a preferred one. Then coming to the toric eye wall calculators, 
there are various formula and toric calculators are available in the available uh, an ideal formula should consider the surgeon induced astigmatism and uh, the posterior cor uh, posterior corneal curvature as well as the effective lens position and sa can be calculated um, there are various astigmatism vector uh, nomograms are available there are online tools such as uh, uh, dr dr hill.com is also available where we can estimate our surgery surgery in induced astigmatism so various nomograph, if you consider only a single conversion factor, if you just take the corneal surface and we estimate what is the uh, supposed power at the uh, lens position, then it becomes a wrong. So we have to consider other uh, factors like posterior corneal, for corneal curvature and effective lens position and anterior chamber depth. So if you don't consider, then that, that may amount for the source of error. So various nomograms are available to adjust this count confounding variables. Baylor nomogram is uh, most commonly used, which incorporates the posterior corneal curvature. And the barrett tori calculator takes into account both effective lens position as well as the posterior corneal astigmatism. So this barrett tori calculator uses an universal two formula, which uh, considers axial length, keratometry, anterior chamber depth, lens thickness, and white to white limbal diameter. And it derives the posterior corneal curvature based on a theoretical model. It is not going to measure. It just assumes and calculates. So this barrett tori calculator is uh, widely available in uh, ASCRS website. And it is developed by Dr. Uh, uh, Barrett. Uh, is a president of American Society of Cataract Referred Surgery. So he has developed and it is available online. APSR. APSR Pacific. This is on the ACRS website, but he was the president of the APSR. APSR. Pacific. Okay, ma'am. Australia. He's from Australia. He's from Australia, yes, ma'am. So uh, this Barrett uh, toric algorithm is in, uh, incorporated into the newer toric, Alcon toric uh, IOL calculation. So this automatically incorporates. So when you are implanting actors of IOL, oil, so we can uh, uh, directly go to their website and uh, incorporate all the data and we'll get the uh, toric IOL proper IOL measurements. So we have this Auroflex toric calculator also. So this, uh, just a dem demo video which shows uh, that how we are going to derive the uh, required IOL through Auroflex toric uh, website. So we need to enter the surgeon name, patient name and the patient ID and we need to select which I to be uh, operated. And we can uh, uh, enter the diapteric value in either diapter or a millimeter form also. So incision location depends on uh, the convenience of the surgeon. So it can enter, it can be entered uh, into the nomogram. So it will finally it will give what uh, the lens to be ordered, and we can know that what will be the anticipated residual astigmatism. So what we have to do is we need to uh, we can change the axis of our uh, implantation or incision so that it can be varied a little bit so that we can get the minimal residual astigmatism. Like in first we entered 180, then we can enter 170 and see what will be the residual astigmatism. So this is what we get and we have to keep doing it until we get the least uh, residual astigmatism. So the value is in between 150 to 160. So we have to consider that access to be uh, for the incision. So once the I will, uh, the particular I will is uh, confirmed, then we have to uh, we can order that, and we have to take a printout to attach the attach to the cation, and always to have a. Uh, print out to be with us when we are operating. 
So the next topic is the Varian image guided system where uh, when once we know that the uh, process starts from the patient selection and then we have to do keratometry axle in measurements so, and uh, then marking of the uh, toric axis everything it, it, it needs lots of manual things to be done so where there can be a error in entering so many data or there can be human errors so to avoid all these things uh, a new system has been introduced where it's called variant image guided system where it helps in all the steps of this uh, toric eye well in starting from the imaging of the eye and then planning and then even interoperative so it has uh, uh, two sets, one is the reference marker and the digital uh, marker. The first is the reference unit where uh, and this uh, whatever the values which are derived can be directly in, uh, taken into the lens X that femto machines also or it can also be integrated into the microscope. So uh, it helps in precise measurement of multiple parameters like uh, it, it does a dynamic keratometry and its limbus position and diameter, white to white horizontal diameter distance and then pupillometry, corneal reflex position, eccentricity of visual axis. So it takes all these uh, uh, measurements and it takes a uh, fingerprint of the eye. So it, uh, it uh, saves this fingerprint of the eye and it carries in all the other steps. So we can uh, transfer the data into the planning software and it optimizes the planning efficiently and uh, it minimizes transcription errors and optimization of A constants can also be done over a period of time and inbuilt formulas are already there within the mission so we can easily select the IOL power and it helps in a comprehensive astigmatism management. It can be used in both uh, flags and also in a microscope integrated display. Introducing the Varion Image Guided System. With the Varion Image Guided System, surgeons can now consistently deliver a new era of refractive cataract precision. Designed to improve accuracy and reduce the potential for error throughout the entire cataract procedure, the Varion Image Guided System consists of the Varion Reference Unit and the Varion Digital Marker. The Varion Reference Unit performs key diagnostic measurements and captures a high-resolution image of the eye in a single step. The high-resolution digital image of the patient's eye captures scleral vessels, limbus, and iris features. This fingerprint of the eye is used to register and track the eye as a visual reference of all incisions, capsulotomy, and IOL positioning. With the Varion Reference Unit, surgeons can also simply and confidently develop their surgical plan. Measurement data is automatically imported into the planning software. This streamlined pre-populating of data fields helps optimize planning efficiency and minimize transcription errors. The Varion Reference Unit allows surgeons to efficiently select the IOL and lens power for their patients by providing multiple established formulas in a simple drop-down format. Most importantly, the Varion Reference Unit also provides comprehensive astigmatism management. Surgeons can now determine optimum incision locations to individualize surgically induced astigmatism and toric lens powers at the same time. The reference image and surgical plan are transferred from the Varion reference unit to the Varion digital marker via USB stick during the execution phase of the procedure. Using the reference image as a fingerprint, the Varion digital marker allows surgeons to position all incisions and alignment in real time while accounting for the variable impact of cyclorotation. The Varion digital marker can be used with the LensX laser and with most surgical microscopes. With the LensX laser, the digital marker facilitates pre-population of the patient parameters as well as pre-positioning of the surgical incision overlays. Working in concert with a Microscope Integrated Display, or MID, the Varion digital marker also provides real-time tracking overlays through the optics of a surgical microscope. These computer-generated overlays offer a new measure of consistency and control for every surgical step of the procedure, including an incision guide, Capsulorexis guide, centration guide for multifocal IOL positioning, and toric alignment guide for lens positioning. 
All of these procedural steps can be wirelessly controlled by the Centurion Vision System foot pedal. See what the Varion Image Guided System can do for you. It might just change the way you perform cataract surgery. So the proper planning is what uh, which is more important and uh, once we plan properly half of our job is done. Thank you.